Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about seaming, seaming mattress stitch. And I'm going to seam up this little hat that was knit flat and um, needs now to be closed at the back. I have um, some ends that haven't been woven in yet. So I'm just gonna leave those dangling to the outside as I work on this project and I will weave them in afterwards. Before I begin, I'm just going to make sure that when I seam, I have my sides lined up correctly. So I'm going to just pinch the two sides together. Notice that the right side of my project is facing out and the inside is to the inside. And I'm going to use these locking stitch markers just to pin the sides of my hat in place. And to make sure that when I'm seaming, um, I don't end up with a lopsided seam using too many stitches on one side and not enough on the other. Now that shouldn't happen with this hat. It's been knit flat and I should have exactly the same number of rows in uh, each side of this hat. But just in case, I'm going to put these stitch markers in to make sure that as I'm seaming everything stays put. Okay. I'm also going to use a different color yarn when I seam. Normally I would use exactly the same yarn as my project was made in, but I think for seeing what I'm doing, it will be helpful if you can see the, the stitches. And then I wanna show you too that when I pull the yarn, um, it completely disappears. Okay, so again, I'm ignoring this tail. I'm just gonna leave it dangle over there. Um, it's not a great idea. You, you could use it to seam up your project, but there's a couple of things that can happen. One is that um, if you pull too tightly, depending on what kind of yarn you're using, you can break the yarn. And so if this is an actual tail attached to the cast on edge of my, uh, my hat, and I end up breaking that yarn, then I may have a very small end that can come undone and get, get a bit raveled looking. Um, the other reason is that if you pull too hard when you're seaming, you can create a pucker and it's difficult to loosen up that pucker if you don't have an exposed end or another tail um, available to you. So I'm going to leave this one to be woven in later and I'm going to use my new, my new seaming yarn for this project. I'm going to start on the right hand side just because there's no there's no reason I could start on the left hand side. There's no it's no problem to start one way or the other. And I'm going to insert my wool needle into as much as I can the very edge of my work. And I'm uh, sliding my wool needle under two of the pearl bumps on this side of my hat. My hat at this point was done in rib stitch. So these are pearl stitches here and I'm just sliding it under, not through, but underneath the two pearl bumps. I'm going to leave a good tail here, maybe six or seven inches long that I'll weave in later. Then I go over to the other side of my work and again on this side I've got two knit stitches. So I'm going to try and work right in between those two knit stitches just because it's a convenient place to work. Sometimes it's hard to work in the very edge of your um, seam allowance and this, this particular hat doesn't have a seam allowance so I'm going to work in between the two stitches instead. All right. I'm going to start at the very bottom. Here's my cast on edge, and I'm going to go under two bars in between those two knit stitches and make sure that I'm not splitting the yarn as much as is humanly possible. And I'm going to draw my yarn through. Leave, I'm leaving the yarn nice and loose so I can see my work as I go. And again, I have the right sides facing me so I can see how the seam is going to look as I go. I inserted my yarn under two bars on the right hand side, drew it through, then went over to the left hand side, inserted my yarn, my wool needle under two, two bars in between the knit stitches on the left hand side, and now I come back to the right hand side. You go back into the same space where the yarn is coming out of, and again, go under two bars, or under two purl bumps, in this case, and draw my yarn through. Now go back to the left hand side and work your way under two more bars. Over to the right hand side, go under two bars. Now, if your stitch marker is in the way, take it out, don't need it anymore. Okay, now here I get one purl bump 
and then I get one more I'm into the stockinette stick stockinette section of my hat so this is not a purl bump anymore it's just the line between the two knit stitches that I'm pulling my wool needle under back to the left hand side and I should be going under one bar in between my knit stitches and then again up into the stockinette section of my hat and under two bars I'm going to do this two more times one on the right hand side and once more on the left hand side and when I have about an inch and a half or two inches worth of um, lacing sometimes seaming I'm going to give it a pull watch what happens when I pull on that pink yarn one thing you might notice is that it disappears completely the second thing that you might notice is that it creates a beautiful seam because my hat didn't have a seam allowance I've got two knits, two purls, two knits, two purls, and where I sewed it up, I used up one of the purl stitches and one of the knit stitches. When I knit this hat again, note to self, I'm gonna start with a, make sure that there's a knit stitch on this side and an extra knit stitch on this side, and then when I seam it up, it will, um, that, that one row of knitting will disappear and I'll be left with two, two rows here. But look at this. The knit stitches in my stockinette stitch hat are just um, zipped up and they look really nice. So it's a really this is a really nice way to seam, particularly in stockinette stitch. Down here at the bottom, when I'm done, I'll take my yarn and I'll just weave it in like this to make sure that the bottom edge is nice and neat. Um, but you may find that when you start seaming, you get a little bit of a divot at the edge here. And that's okay, you can fix that later. Right, let's continue seaming. I'm going to take out this stitch marker because it's going to be in the way very soon. To get going again, I just pull back on my yarn so that I can see where I left off. My yarn is coming out of the left hand side, so that means I need to go back to the right hand side, go back into the same spot where my seaming yarn is coming out of, and use my wool needle just to push up under the bars so that I can see two bars here pull my yarn through, go back to the left hand side and do the same thing. All right, I'm going to uh, seam up to the part at the top where my decreases happen and then I'll just explain to you how to deal with decreases. Remember to pull every few inches. And notice how even though I'm using pink yarn, it disappears. Do you see though where you can see this pink, pink th peek through right here? That's where it's not quite tight enough. So I'm gonna try and tighten it a little bit more. There, I can see it a little bit, I'm gonna tighten it. And this is another reason why it's nice to have a bit of yarn down here at the bottom so I can tighten that up. I'm really pleased with the fact that um, you can barely see that pink yarn. Um, that's, a, that's a good thing because if you're using a wool or a yarn that's fancy or breakable and it's not great for seaming, then it's good to know that you can use a different yarn and it won't be noticed. So up in this section here, we start to run into some decreases and the decreases are very close to the edge of the seam. So sometimes that makes things a little less, um, 
a little messier underneath. So I'm still working my way up, trying to go under two bars on each side. But you just may find that depending on where those decreases are happening, you might have to fudge it just a little bit. So again, the lines aren't quite, um, the bars aren't quite as solid and easy to see in this section, but I think I'm going under approximately two bars. On this side, there are no decreases, so things proceed just as they normally would. And when I can't see two bars or I'm not sure, then I go under what I think would be approximately two bars and try to keep the amount of um, inching up that I'm doing the same on both sides of the hat. I just love pulling on that seaming yarn and watching it disappear. Okay, you can expect to see a little bit of peek through with that extra yarn that I've got in there, but it's really minimal. So when the wearer puts this on their head, they're really not going to see a seam at all, and you shouldn't be able to see um, any gaps between the stitches. They should, the distance between the stitches when you pull on it should be about the same on either side of the seam as it is where the seam occurred itself. That's what you're aiming for. Okay, next step, weave in all those ends.